there everyone look today I'm just gonna get super real with you I'm gonna blow the whistle we've got a serious issue within the spiritual community and shall we say within the world at large and it goes a little something like this unless everything in your life is going perfectly you're doing something wrong and in order for you to be doing something right everything in your life has to be going well Pretty much the second that we decided, or figured out, shall I say, that mind creates reality, and pretty much the second we realized that law of attraction was the basic principle that our entire time-space reality operated according to, we took that to the worst possible scenario. And what we did is, we made that mean, I have to focus positively 24 hours a day and feel good all the time or else my entire life is going straight down the tubes. We became spiritual perfectionists to the degree that we were actually more self-loving when we were unconscious and believed the world was separate from us and that bad things just happened to us. So essentially we believe that everything's about positive focus and feeling good and if we aren't feeling good we're out of control and failing miserably. The law of attraction is essentially the law of mirroring. It was a genius construct we came up with for this time-space reality because it would enable us to become more self-conscious than ever before. How genius is that? That whatever is inside me is going to reflect externally so I can actually see it and recognize it. Genius idea, right? Awesome, but almost everything comes with a catch. The catch is, if your external world isn't perfect, whose fault is it? Your fault. So much of the stuff that reflects in our external reality are things within us that we actually have no conscious awareness of until it shows up externally. We call this post-manifestational awareness. But let's just say you do recognize something because it shows up externally, even when we become consciously aware of it. As we all know, it's not that easy to change. I mean, you can recognize that your spouse leaving you is the reflection of abandonment issues you have, but did that awareness cause you to feel great about your spouse leaving? Hell no. The bottom line is we don't feel good 24-7, but we've been told it's our choice to feel good or bad at all moments of the day, so what do we do? We feel like failures because our life isn't picture of perfect, but all we know how to do is try harder, so we become self-abusive, all in the name of spirituality. So what exactly are we expecting of ourselves? Let's get present to it. Number one, we expect ourselves to be completely aware of everything within us so that there's never any surprises. We have total control over our reality. Two, we expect ourselves to consciously choose everything in our life. So we're expecting that nothing unwanted ever crosses our path. Three, we expect ourselves to change our focus and change the way we're thinking instantaneously so that we instantly feel good. And in fact, we maintain that state of feeling good no matter what happens to us. Four, we expect ourselves to be the quite literal image of spiritual perfection that we have in our heads. Okay, so after saying all that, if you're anything like me, you're probably thinking, okay, that level of pressure has got me actually regretting the fact that I ever became spiritual in the first place. Like, is consciousness worth it? Is enlightenment worth it? I don't think so. If it isn't bad enough that we expect this of ourselves, we expect it of other people too. We face the judgment within the community all the time. Is if it isn't bad enough things aren't going well, we get to add, oh, guess what? You're creating all of it to the mix. So we can essentially burn in the hellfire of self-blame. So we have a belief that if we weren't doing something wrong, our life would be going perfect. In other words, if life isn't going perfect, I'm doing something spiritually wrong. I should be feeling good no matter what's going on, and if I'm not, I'm doing something wrong and bad things are going to manifest. And I can't seem to get it right because look at my life, so something must be wrong with me. Oh my god. Okay, just like stop for a minute and look at that level of pressure. Like if you have to turn this video off to realize what I just said and to realize the amount of pressure you're under, do it. Because you've got to get present to the fact that this is quite literally 
Shame. Guess what? I did a video on that. Go take a look at it. It's called How to Overcome Shame. But this is shame the spiritual community actually supports. So depending on your particular spiritual practice, you have an idea of how a spiritually perfected person should look, should act, should be feeling, what their life should look like, essentially. And if you're doing anything less than that, you're failing miserably. For example, if you're in some Buddhist circles, if you're not at total peace in a state of non-reactivity, free from attachment, living as a minimalist in brown robes, there's something wrong with you. Or, if you're in the positive focus law of attraction community, if you're not a millionaire by now with a perfect partner and the best possible career and wonderful friends and perfect health, feeling unconditional love as you drive your new Ferrari down the freeway with positive forward-thinking attitude, there's something wrong with you. Nothing is wrong with you. You are not failing if your life is not the image of absolute perfection, especially spiritual perfection. What has happened is that your ego has hijacked your spiritual practice. It does so all the time. So essentially, the ego is the only one that is concerned with being good versus being bad, being right versus being wrong, or being successful versus being a failure. And the deeper truth is that you're still desperately trying to get love by being right, good, and successful. So what should you do? You should give yourself that love. Give yourself compassion and loving care to the aspect of you that feels so unlovable and so much in need of love that it is desperately trying to cram you into the image that it believes is lovable and perfect and good. That perfect image of the person who is spiritually enlightened, the person who has it all, the person who's doing life right. Realize that you're dealing with yourself the same way adults in your childhood did. You're expecting perfection from yourself in order to believe that something is right and lovable about you. Sit down and have a come to Jesus moment about the pressure that you're actually putting on yourself. You have to realize what you're actually expecting from yourself. For example, there's a major difference between actually feeling forgiveness and expecting yourself to feel forgiveness. I'm going to give you a personal example. A while back, when I had one of these come-to-Jesus moments about the pressure I was actually putting on myself, I realized that as a spiritual teacher, I thought that it was really important, in fact, I expected it from myself, that I would feel good no matter what happened. I mean, I was in a total state of absolute joy regardless. And if I wasn't, that meant something was wrong with me. So, just so you get the pressure that even I, as a spiritual teacher, put on myself, what I was expecting is that I felt good, regardless of whether people slandered me on the internet, burnt my paintings in public demonstration, or sent me death threat letters. That's super fair. Mm -hmm. It's also super tempting when we have an idea in our heads about how things should be going, or how we should feel, or how we should act, or what spiritual perfection should look like, to create a facade for ourselves, to make ourselves believe we do feel that way, we are that way, or we think that way, when in truth, we actually don't. We have a word for this in the spiritual business. We call it spiritual bypassing. So if you have this issue with putting a hell of a lot of spiritual pressure on yourself, you can believe that the door is wide open for you to fall into the trap of spiritual bypassing. For this reason, I want you to actually watch my video on YouTube titled Spiritual Bypassing. It is tempting to look at people who you think fit the stereotypical image of your definition of spiritual perfection and to make that the new standard you compare yourself next to. But I need to break open this particular, shall we say, lie for you today? This is part of my authenticity movement. Guess what? Hate to break it to you, so much of it is total pretense. I'm around other spiritual teachers all the time. I cannot believe how much pretense exists amongst those of us who are selling to you the idea of the perfect spiritual person or the perfect ideal way of living or life. It actually made me nauseous when I entered this particular sphere. Now think about this for a minute. You may think to yourself, you know what, no, I'd actually be able to tell. Would you? Would you know if I hadn't just quite literally flat out told you that I have an issue when the people who are, you know, my hate groups essentially, when they're focusing their negative energy at me or slandering me, would you expect that that makes me feel bad? Or if I didn't say anything, would you expect that I have such a transcendent perspective as a spiritual teacher that it would not affect me at all? You don't know what's really going on with other people when they don't flat out tell you. 
And most people won't flat out tell you because they don't want to be seen as failures. And so you assume you're the only one that can't get it right. Here's another story. When I first entered this particular sphere, the spiritual teacher sphere, and I started interacting with other spiritual teachers, they would come up to me all the time and say, I love what you're doing with your authenticity movement. It's so brave. It's so cutting edge. It's so awesome. And I'd say, why aren't you doing it? Do you know what they'd say to me? It's too risky. Because if people actually saw how we felt and the stuff that happens behind the velvet curtain, they wouldn't listen to our message. And guess what? They're right. A lot of times, people, they will hear the truth about what's going on behind the velvet curtain with those of us that are supposed to be spiritually perfect. And they say, wow, that person feels negative emotion in this scenario, and they shouldn't if they had such a transcendental perspective. So I don't really want to listen to what they have to say. So no wonder there are many of us who are selling you the image of spiritual perfection who continue selling it. It's the only reason you listen to us. So what happens when other people don't flat out tell you what's going on because they don't want to be seen as failures? You assume you're the only one that can't get it right. What if no one can get it right? And on top of that, in this universe, there is no ultimate right. Let that sit in for a minute. Right is a matter of perspective. And if you haven't noticed yet, no one agrees on that perspective. So right versus wrong is an entirely subjective experience. Let yourself off the hook. There is no way to get it wrong. Why? Because there is no writing in the sky that says what's wrong. Have you noticed that yet? If you knew what was wrong and knew it was right, it would be pretty freaking easy to live your life right. <laughs> but that doesn't exist. So if you can't get life wrong, then you can't get life right. That can either cause you pain or it can set you free. What if you stopped expecting yourself at this very minute to feel good? Because feeling bad doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. Would it be okay not to feel good? What if you stopped expecting yourself at this very minute to have the perfect job or the perfect partner or to be a millionaire by now? Because not having those things doesn't mean something's wrong with you. Would it be okay to be where you are? Right now at this minute, I want you to make a list of the things you disapprove of about yourself. To find that, all you got to look at is what do you expect of yourself that you're completely failing at? After you write that list for each point, I want you to find approval for it. If you can't do it on your own, involve other people in this process because they are all coming at this from a different perspective. Maybe they can see some angles you can't see. But what I want you to do is to think about this. How is it good, not just okay, how is it good to feel bad? How is it good to be reactive? How is it good to have no money? If you flat out disapprove of an aspect of yourself that is true in this moment, you're in resistance to what is, so all you get is more of what is. When you look at the things you expect from yourself or desperately want to reach, I want you to have another come to Jesus moment, but this time about why you want those things. Also, take a look at what you're trying to get away from to the opposite side of those things that you want. For example, a person may want a perfect partner because they want to feel a sense of being loved and valued because to the opposite side, they hate the feeling of being alone with the feeling of being unlovable and worthless, which is the truth of how they actually feel about themselves. The bottom line is you have been trying to do it this way for a really long time. And in case you haven't noticed yet, it's not working. You've just added your name to another incredibly long list of people who enter the spiritual field specifically because they think that spirituality is going to somehow perfect them so they become more lovable. Which means you've just added your name to the psychotically long list of self-haters in the spiritual community. It's full of them. If you knew you were never going to be able to get it right, what then? What would be possible then? What would you do instead? Take the pressure off because you're not failing. Imagine a world where everything you experienced was okay the way it was. Imagine accepting what is. That doesn't mean surrendering in a state of defeat to what is. It means embracing what is. Imagine if it was okay and correct to feel the way you feel. Imagine if it was okay and correct to experience the things you were experiencing. Imagine a world where everything, the way it is in this moment, was lovable the way that it is and valuable. Have a good week.